Hello everybody, I hope you are well. This is the second in the series where Shifu Cameron Hurst takes me through some of the fundamentals of Northern Seventh Star Praying Mantis Kung Fu. In today's video, we look at the first four of their eight fundamental stance. Now the stances are absolutely key to the way their entire art is constructed and the way it's performed. Um, so we've spent quite a bit of time on this. In part one, we look at the horse stance, um, the hill climbing stance, the seven star stance, and the tiger riding stance. Cameron explains a lot of detail about how these stances came about and the mechanics of them, and I give it a go. I hope you find this interesting. It was fascinating for me to see something so different to Aikido and uh, get some of the ideas as, as to why the mechanics are like they are. If you enjoy this, smash the like button, click the little bell thing so you get the notifications and uh, enjoy. Okay, so what we're gonna look at first is our basic stances for the Seven Star Praying Mantis system. And we have eight stances in the system, which is quite an important number in the kind of Chinese culture. So the first one is probably the most well-known and that's the horse stance. So essentially you're just, as, as you would ride a horse, your legs are apart sideways. And in our system, we circle our feet into the horse stance. Okay, so we're trying to keep our feet pointing forward, knees push out, and if we can, our back straight, okay? And you can either put your hands here, or you can have your hands out, all right? So do you want to give that a try? That's it, back straight. And knees in line with the feet. Yeah, then you, you want to keep your, your shin kind of as, as vertical as possible. You don't want it leaning in. And everyone's gonna have a different hip structure and a different limb length. So you're gonna look a little bit different to maybe someone else in the way you hold the position. Are your feet at 45 or you're tucking your toes in? No, you're, you're wanting to have your, if you, if you can, you want your feet pointing forward, but um, a lot of people who are not used to the position to make it more comfortable, they might have to just slightly turn the feet out. And you want to use your toes to actually grip the floor. Okay, that's a very traditional way to do the, the horse stance. So you're actually gripping the floor with your toes if possible. And the, the stance of that stance, um, and I've seen that before in, in Wing Chun, but so you're, you're, you're dropping into here, but you're, you're keeping this stable while you're swinging yeah, side. in much the same way that you Is would that, in Tai Chi, you're, you're, you're using your center of balance to go onto that foot. So you're not, you're not just falling into it. Right. You're controlling your balance, as with everything, because the stance is one thing, but even more important than the stance is how you combine the stances. Right. So if you're moving from one stance to another, you want to be able to keep your balance and keep your weight on whatever foot you're standing on. So if I'm going from a horse stance and I want to step through, then I need to put the weight onto this foot. So transition. Yeah. That, and, and we use that in the, the opening. And does not matter which foot? Which we foot normally foot? go with the left, left foot first. And it's the inguinal fold opening thing, is it? The, you know, the, the hip. Yeah, but not too much. Here, not too much external rotation. We're going to keep our foot pointing forward as we do it. That's it. Now from here, we can turn our body into the next stance, which is the hill climbing stance. So if I'm in a horse stance, from here, I just turn, okay? And I'm going to be facing this way. Okay, my back leg is straight. Front leg is bent. You're gonna have a little bit more weight on the front foot than the back foot because my body should be in one line. So different to some other styles of Chinese martial arts, particularly something like Tai Chi, where they have a more upright position because we are a more offensive style, we want to be moving in. 
So you've got a line up through your back. A line th through this leg coming up to my head. Okay? And just as important is the position of the feet. So if we take a line on the floor, okay, much the same way as a boxer starts, this toe is going to line up with this heel, and my feet are going to be pointing at 45 degrees to my body. Here. So just turn your turn your hips. That in. Yep. That so what you're seeing here is a common uh, I wouldn't say a problem, but not the way we would do it. Okay. So this foot here, his foot, foot is pointing straight forward, but we want to turn that, so it's pointing off this way. Okay, so your hips are actually going across. Though. Slightly, yeah. Both our feet are going to be like railroad tracks, pointing off at 45 degrees. So your back foot's going to turn just a little bit, and this foot's so going like to be... Attention still that direction. So your opponent's going to be in front of you, but your foot is going to be turned. And the reason for that is because in the mantis system, much like the hands where we're hooking and grabbing, the feet are also hooking and grabbing. Yep. Okay, we, we, we can use this as an offensive technique because the mantis system uses the hands and the feet together to create offense. And that's what makes it quite difficult to to really achieve to a high level because you need to coordinate your yeah. not just the footwork but a, actually the attacking with the hands and the feet okay so we've done the, we've done the horse stance or the mabu then we did the hill climbing stance the next stance is the one that is probably uh, maybe second most famous in the manta system and that's the seven star stance so we call ourselves Seven Star Praying Mantis and this, uh, this position, this body position represents uh, what is known as the seven stars somewhere up there oh, okay. gotcha. that make a, a, a shape. So this is meant to represent that but it also represents the points of the body. So you've got, you know, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, yes. wrists, so you make Seven, seven points of the body. So for this position, what we're actually doing is we're going to have more weight on our back foot. This foot's going to be bent slightly, not, not, not completely, but we want to try and be relatively low. And then this foot is going to be out and the toes come up. Okay, and then we can put our hands in a ready position. All right, so my back foot is off at 45 degrees to my direction and this leg comes out in front okay yep so you want the front leg almost straight so essentially straight but not locked out straight okay and what what we're trying to achieve here this is one of the more important uh attacking principles in the system is using the foot in this manner so if my opponent is in front i can be kicking to the shin i can be standing on his foot i can be hooking here and then we might pull against the foot or we might throw him here using the foot so it's, a, it's an important position to be comfortable and strong in that's why we have a stance where we hold this position the next stance, which is the one that people will probably have seen the most with regards to Mantis, is the tiger riding stance. So with this position, about 90% of the weight is going to be on the back foot. Again, the back foot's going to be off at a 45 degrees. The front foot is going to be in the same line, and we just have the weight on our toe, and we're dropping down pulling our hips back and down, okay? So this is our position here. So the reason I've only got a little bit of weight on this foot is quite simply so I can kick, okay? I can kick without having to adjust the weight on my back foot. So from here I can kick, I can kick to the groin, I could do more of a kick to the solar plexus, okay? Or I can come up and block a kick or a sweep. 
So if you just want to try that. So it's on onto here. Yep, so you can curl, turn, turn this front foot in a little bit. Yep. And then most of the weight is going to be on the back foot. So you should be able to lift, lift this front leg without changing any part of balance or weight distribution. Okay? And you'll see a similar thing in terms of application in Muay Thai fighters. You see Muay Thai fighters using this kind of stepping technique where they're, they're taking the, the balance or the weight off this front foot so they can quickly kick or block. And the concept is the same. Can I ask Does the weight stay equally distributed across the back foot? Because yeah. I'm, I, I'm obviously because I'm a novice. I'm feeling my weight going into the outside edge of my foot very slightly. Should I be pronating slightly so my instep keeps contact, or is it just soft feet? You want essentially you want to keep the weight through the centre of your foot if you can. So you don't want to allow the foot to uh, roll inward, and you don't want to put the weight on the outside of your foot. So as much in the middle. I mean, this is more about maintaining balance and also for further movement because from this position you would come into a hill climbing stance to attack.